So welcome to this quick video on Azure Active Directory conditional access. And really my goal for this is to quickly explain what it is, uh, why I care about it and how it works. So conditional access is a feature of Azure Active Directory. It's available with the premium SKUs, so P1 and P2. If I navigate to my Azure Active Directory, I can scroll down and I'll see conditional access. From within here, I can create policies. And there's really two parts to conditional access. There are the conditions which need to be met for this policy to apply. And then there's what I actually want to do if they apply. So I'm going to start off looking at an example I created recently. So this is all about SharePoint access from a browser. And specifically, if I go and look at this, I give it a name. Then I have the assignments. So think of the assignments as these are the various conditions that have to be met for this to be applied. And then what do I want to do? So when I look at the assignments, firstly, I can assign it to all users, uh, specific groups, maybe just guests of my Azure Active Directory, for example, those B2B users, uh, particular roles, or just general users and groups. I can also exclude. This is always a good idea because think about if I'm testing something out and I enable it and I do it wrong, well, maybe I lock everyone out. That would be a very bad day. So what's a good idea is, for example, here, I'm excluding my cloud admins. This is a group that includes my core administrators. Then after I've tested it out with regular users and I'm good, I maybe would remove this. So I'm specifying who this is applying to. And again, it can be just users, groups of users, particular roles, uh, just guests. Then what do I want to target? So I could say all cloud applications, excluding certain ones. In this case, I've just targeted this at SharePoint Online. Then I'm talking about conditions. Now, one of those conditions is sign-in risk. This is only available if I have Azure AD Premium P2. That includes the identity protection that enables me to evaluate the risk of each individual sign-in, in addition to the user's overall risk. But it's the sign-in risk that will be included here. This will be things like, hey, I'm signing in from an unfamiliar location, and there's other things it checks. So I could consider the risk as part of this criteria. I can select the platforms. So in my scenario, I'm going to target if I'm using a web browser on a Windows machine. But notice I could also target Android, iOS, Windows Phone, or Mac OS. I can then specify locations. So I'm saying any location except my trusted locations. And my trusted locations may be my corporate locations. So I'm saying, look, don't worry about those. Don't apply this if I'm in a trusted location. And I defined what are trusted locations as part of conditional access based on the public facing IP address. If I'm on an internal network, there will be public IPs that are used to actually NAT convert my traffic to IP addresses that are valid on the internet. So it's what are those internet facing IPs that define a trusted location. So, so far I'm saying, hey, if it's a Windows platform and I'm not in a trusted location, and then I want to target if it's the browser, I don't care if it's like a desktop client, i.e. the office applications. And I don't care about device state. If I was targeting, for example, uh, iOS, Android, I can integrate with Intune to actually find out the health of the machine. So I have to meet these conditions. You can see there's a wide range based on location, user, role, health, type of device, platform, the application I'm using, and the service I'm trying to get to. So I've defined all those conditions. And then what do I want to do? So I want to maybe block access or grant access. In my case, I want them to require MFA. So I'm trying to access SharePoint from a web browser on a Windows machine, not in a trusted location. Let's make sure they really are who they say they are. So let's do an MFA. I could also require the device to be marked as compliant. Again, we're going to get that information from Intune. 
I could require it to be AD joined. So it's that hybrid solution there. I could require it to be an approved client app. So for example, the Microsoft applications. And I can see a whole list of those. And ignore these for now. These are terms of use that I've generated and I'll talk about at the end. And if I had selected multiple controls, I could say, do I require all of them to be met? I, I must be MFA and I must be marked as compliant or just be one of them. And then at the session level, uh, I'm going to use app enforced restrictions. Now, what this does for SharePoint by turning this on, it will send a special attribute as part of my token that says, look, just give me read access. So this is enabled and I've applied this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go over to my SharePoint. So if I go over to my HTTP S and I go to my Savile Tech Lab admin dot SharePoint dot com. So there's one other configuration I have to do. This is only because I'm doing that special kind of read access SharePoint config. Now what's interesting is look what it's done. I'm already signed into Azure Active Directory. But because of that policy, remember it was SharePoint Online, well, the admin console counts as part of SharePoint Online. So it's making me do that MFA. So, okay, so now I'm going to type in my code that it just texted my phone. So you can see already that policy took effect. I'm on a machine that's not in a known location. So it made me do an MFA as I access SharePoint. And then in SharePoint, I just went and applied this control, allow limited web only access. So now to kind of complete that user experience, if I now actually go to my regular SharePoint, it's not gonna make me MFA again because I've already just done that for SharePoint. It's now part of my access token to SharePoint that I've got, states I authenticated with MFA. I can now go and look at my documents and hey look, your organization doesn't allow you to download print. That policy has taken effect. And that policy will flow through if I now try and look at the document. Well, hey, guess what? The same thing is applying. So I can see that conditional access policy is applied to the SharePoint service when I'm meeting those conditions. Hey, a web browser on a Windows machine that's not in a trusted location. So that's just really kind of one example of conditional access. I have other policies that say, well, if I'm using the client applications, so now I'm targeting the same group of users. I'm gonna target Exchange Online and SharePoint Online. This would impact SharePoint, uh, OneDrive for Business, Outlook. This time, I'm gonna target, again, Windows. I don't care about the location. This time it has to be mobile and desktop clients. Now, because it's Windows, Mobile apps don't apply. And it's gonna be those modern authentication clients only, i.e. the Outlook suite, not the Office 2010. And this time I'm gonna grant access providing it's AD joint as the only requirement. So if I was signing with Outlook or the OneDrive for business client, I'm gonna go and get that access. So that's what conditional access gives me. I've got other examples here, one around modern authentication. Again, targeting Exchange and SharePoint. This time I'm targeting iOS and Android. I'm targeting the mobile applications, so this wouldn't apply if I was using the browser or the native ActiveSync client. And I require it to be marked as compliant, i.e. registered with Intune and Healthy. Or, it's an approved client app because I selected one of them. So my choice here is either my device is registered using mobile device management, i.e. the whole device is managed by Intune, or if it's not, I have to be using an approved client app, i.e. the Microsoft client app, at which point I can use mobile application management. So maybe it's a user's personal device. So I wanna, don't wanna apply MDM to that device, but I still want to manage my company's intellectual property. So I'm really giving them a choice. Hey, you can have your device registered with Intune, whereby my organization can manage the whole device and apply policy. 
or if you don't want that that's fine you have to use the approved client app which supports application management or MAM where I can still protect my company's IP uh, require a pin on the app etc likewise I have a policy if it doesn't support modern auth this time I'm just targeting exchange I'm focusing active sync clients and I require the device to be marked as compliant or approved client app again so one or the other so that's conditional access location user group role health type of client type of application and then what I want to actually allow now one nice extension to this is actually terms of use so terms of use enables me to create essentially documents they're PDF files I upload and then assign them using conditional access so I've got a general terms of use and one for Twitter and they're two different documents and when I create these what will actually happen is they'll turn up as options for conditional access so if I look at my general terms of use I assign this to everyone and every application and I allow access providing they accept the general terms of use now as a user the first time I try to access anything it made me sign that terms of use so if I go to my portal my apps and I look at my profile and I look at the review terms of use I can see that it will show me yep you accepted the general terms of use on a certain date and I can review exactly what I did so there's me as a Simpsons character and it told me to behave and I accepted that I was like yep yeah, I'm gonna behave so that, that's great if I go back I also added one for Twitter and for Twitter I only target t the Twitter application and again I can target any enterprise app registered with my Azure Active Directory so think about even things on premises if I'm publishing it with Azure Active Directory application proxy I could do checks here as part of my pre-authentication if I have custom SAML relationships I can add them here so there's a huge scope for this and this time my grant is I have to accept the Twitter terms of use so now if I try and access Twitter I want to tweet something before I can it's going to show me the terms of use that I have to accept so I've not accepted that yet so again I can expand that out and there's me again this time it says we'll behave on Twitter and I'm not going to accept that so I can show this again in future demos but if I click accept then it would carry me on through to Twitter if I don't accept I can't get to it so that's just kind of a very nice extension that I can do with conditional access uh, additional things can show here if I added a third party MFA for example duo um, that would show here so that's how I can integrate with third party MFA providers so I hope this was useful this is a hugely powerful feature really a great way to help me do additional controls on accessing services based on all those different criteria we discussed thank you very much